Today's workshop, I hope, really gave them a look at the kind of creative mind that they can have. Right, warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. And what are the cool colors? Green, blue, and purple. Very good. Our students are coming to us um, about 90 to 95 percent free and reduced lunch. Often they don't have the same opportunities to engage in STEM activities in outside of school. Miss Mankins really is a huge proponent of that and you can see it in the work that she does, how much she tries to engage the kids in activities in lots of different places. Think him of a happy place he had visited once in a dream. I think she's doing it because she wants us to succeed in life and to pursue our dreams. She's a real nice lady. You want to you know, help out her projects because she's really helping out other people around the community and so it's kind of a neat thing to be involved in. And then she also really is a great promoter of literacy. She wants the students to be able to take books home with them so that they can continue to extend their learning beyond just the classroom. My name is Burl Mankins and I'm Executive Director of the Young Scholars STEAM Workshops. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. In 2008, my grandson, who was eight years old at the time, Cameron, saw a house that had burned down. And we talked about what possibly would the kids do and what possibly could they have lost in the house. I basically asked my grandma, like, what happened to all their supplies, their books, their toys, and um, like what people were going to say about them because of the stuff they didn't know in class because they didn't have books. And he decided and asked me, could I collect books? And I said, oh, of course you can. That's so sweet. And his program took off. <laughs> To help to contribute to get the books, I would go to Goodwills and mega thrifts and local thrift stores and we would basically look for books, gently read, make sure they had the spine, make sure no water damage, stuff like that. And then later on we started writing grants and we started going out asking for money, having book drives and books just started rolling in, people started spreading the word about the book program and then lo and behold there was uh, like thousands of books on my grandma's porch. We've received permission to store the books in the Martin Luther King Community Center Library. We then discovered that would be a great place for our overflow of books, and we began bringing books here. We refurbished the Martin Luther King Recreation Center's library because of their older books were old, and we wanted to update their books. We have donated over 2,000 books to the Martin Luther King Library. I didn't think it was going to be as hard as it was to do it. And then it was a lot of lifting books and toting them this and there. And then there was a lot of sorting. So it took up a lot of my time. So I really couldn't really go outside and spend time with my friends. Cameron and I decided that we wanted to meet the children that were getting the books. And I had read about the fact that children of color and adults of color were underrepresented in the science and math, technology, engineering, and the art that is in all of those fields. We wanted to encourage children to take math classes and to take science classes and to realize how important it would be for them to have these classes and the skills and the terminology. And so we started the Young Scholars STEAM Workshop in 2015. We've had challenges along the way because grandma majored in Afro-American studies and had a double minor in sociology and psychology. Now you ask, where is the business course in there? Where is the science course? Where is the math? <laughs> So I had to depend on advisors to help me when I had questions. I have found so many volunteers that have said, I'm willing to spend a Saturday with a workshop. I want to give back. And if you have students that want to learn, 
that I'll tell them about my career and I'll get them involved in an activity. We had a workshop on medical careers. We talked about all the different types of persons that work in the medical field. We talked about anatomy of the body and we talked about the bones. The children seemed to enjoy that and I enjoyed just watching them learn. I thought that was amazing. In order to apply for Medicaid, a family of two cannot have but one car. So I had to sell my Buick LeSabre so that my husband could keep the van and get funds to help pay for his back surgery. I missed my Buick LeSabre because now that his van has been hit and damaged, we're out of transportation. I ride the bus to get to meetings, and I ride the bus to get to the doctor's office, and I ride the bus to buy groceries because I am a volunteer with community service hours trying to do good. I think she really helps her community, which includes our school and, and our families, to really be on the same page when it comes to their students' education. Ms. Mankins has been an excellent person to bring these activities to the students so they can find out things that they didn't even know exist. I think that's a really big part of what makes community programs like hers important and essential. It gets them into doing things that maybe they're interested in and who knows that could lead to a career or something. So. I think she really does care about the kids in the program because she wants you to learn about um, stuff that you never learned about before, like different stuff in math and different things in science. Our goal is to have a STEAM workshop in every Title I school area at least 45 weeks out of the year. I want this for all children in need of that risk. I want this for all Title I children because we matter too.